straight to Zoom. Let me welcome Richardin Batty. Richardin is a member of the Recording Academy of the Grammys and also a Grammy U mentor. She is the North American press agent and the U.S. business manager for Nigerian musician Oxlade. Richard, if you could hear me, good morning. Welcome to 3FM. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? I am well, and you? 3FM, great, great, great. 92.7. Nice to have you this morning. In as much as I know you should actually be in bed by now, I'm trying to <laughs> disturb your sleep. Forgive me, forgive me. But it's, it's 10, 28 in Ghana now. Um, that should be like yes. 5, 28 in the state now. Uh, it's 626 right now. Okay, all right. So, um, yeah, so you you heard me talk briefly about the new sound now that is catching the vibe far away in, in the state. But what would you say has been the impact of African music on the world stage now? Oh, my gosh. I mean, you, you see what's been going on. Like, it's, it's everywhere. It's influencing everyone. Um, so many artists all over the world are uh, speaking some form of pigeon they're dancing to afro music like it's it's such a beautiful thing so i'm I'm so glad that we're here right now so sh- should we critically analyze the the strength and weaknesses of 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 afro beat now um in the state what would you say Let's go for it pardon me what what was your question? So I, I I'm asking, should we critically analyze the strength and weaknesses of our sound now at the world stage? What what would that be? If I mean, so it depends on on how the music is made, and sometimes you know some some people will argue that you need to put lots of English in it for people to get it around the world. <laughs> and then sometimes that's not the case. Um, you, there can be teaching moments, like with Oxlade's Colosa. You know, like people didn't get it at first. And then when he did his press rounds, he was able to explain what it actually means. Mm. Like, you know, okay. it's just a, a pronunciation of the word closer. Okay, so and, you, uh, right, you know... Right. Mm. And and breaking down the the meaning of the lyrics and you know all of that, so we are finally in a place where if the song does well and it's it becomes popular and it becomes part of pop culture, people want to know. People that don't speak pidgin or any African dialects, mm. they're interested. Okay, all right. So so you mean it necessarily doesn't have to be in English for it to be accepted? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. That's what we're seeing now. Okay. All right. So how easy or difficult has it been pushing Afrobeat music in the state? Oh, my God. (laughs) It's been so many years. Um, I know that London and other places around the world, they, they were ahead. You know, they got it very, very quickly. And I think that's because of the cultures there, like, and just around the world, like, America is a place where our blackness and our Africanness is just coming now. So, you know, you guys should bear with us. But <laughs> there's there's enough of us that are interested and has been working behind the scenes in the music com- uh, community that has been pushing for it. And now we're here today. But it's been very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's when I was reaching out to people maybe five plus years ago, they some were interested because maybe they have African backgrounds, maybe their first generation, but there wasn't a place to put it. Okay. So as, as, as a young artist here in Accra, and um, I'm looking at breaking through to mainstream in the USA, what is required of me, Bati? Well, so we have to release the music in the United States. And I think that that's something that wasn't clear from the beginning when the announcement was made about the the new category. Mm. It wasn't clear that these songs that we want to submit, they, they're only, they only qualify when they are released in the United States. So that's the first thing. Um, you know, get with a label, 
in the States or maybe one of the big conglomerates that have a U.S. Um, department or, you know, end. And that would be the first thing. Secondly, I would become a member of the Recording Academy so you can understand, like, how to submit. You know, right now we are we are actually submitting the records there. The Academy is doing um, its part to onboard people and help them understand, like, what needs to happen on the online entry process for like voting and um, just submitting the records also. And then I would, as an artist, I would also understand like what the technicalities are because there's things like maybe it needs to be produced by an African person specifically for this best African music um, performance category. You would have to read the things and make sure that you understand what's required of you for you to have a chance. Okay, so in <laughs> in your just ended response, you said release in the state, become a member of the recording academy. I I actually have interest in this too. So releasing in the state means you need to have or you need to get a record label in the states for them to release a song on your behalf. Is that what you're saying? Yes, or or because there's a lot of artists that are here, start a label, indie label. It doesn't need to be the big three. It doesn't need to be that. Have an American address and release the music under that for it to qualify. Mm. That mm. is that is the biggest thing because, I mean, there's been so many beautiful songs that have been rela released on the continent, but they won't qualify, okay. unfortunately. All right. So... Becoming a member of the Recording Academy, I, I've, I've heard this a few times, and I, I sometimes wonder how one gets to be part. Do, do you get to apply, or somebody would have to actually introduce you to somebody in there to get your name affirmed? How do you get to be a member of the Recording Academy? So, yes, you, you have to be nominated by two people. Okay. Um, but you can start the process online, like where you can join, and then you can give the link to two people to nominate you. So that can be someone that is in the academy, academy or just someone that wants to nominate you, maybe like a, a music teacher or someone that knows you that can basically speak to your character. Mm. Okay. I I I don't want to hold this grammar talk now. I just want to go back quickly and also um, ask you about one, one thing that our, our music, especially because you've been on our continent. I know you, you've been to Ghana, you've been to Nigeria, South Africa. What are we going to be doing right to, to get our music to be accepted globally? What exactly are we going to be doing right? No, I think, I think we're in a place now where you guys are doing it right. Mm. You know, I think it was just, that doesn't mean that the music wasn't already beautiful and great. I think it, it took a long time for us here to not only understand it or just because we are very like just speedy, speedy, speedy. And as you can imagine, like anywhere else, there's so many artists already, you know, to, to pay attention to. So I think the pandemic really helps because we were all like sitting still and looking for new things. Mm. And that's how a lot of us came across Afrobeats, you know, us outside of the music industry, of course, but. I think I think what everyone is doing is beautiful already. I, I what I would like to see is that when we do have press opportunities, we are taking the time to explain the culture, explain how we got here, explain what we're saying in the song so these audiences can connect even deeper and further. Okay, um, so so it's not just a passing moment. All right. All right. So it means COVID was not that bad as, as we, we tried to paint it. <laughs> there was or there is a good side of COVID, if, if I should say. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, that one is a little tricky. Okay. So I get, <laughs> but yeah. All right. So um, collaborations. Collaborations have actually been said to be one of the factors to get these artists, get our music, get to, to, to that point we've all been looking for. But who exactly... Are, are we collaborating with the labels themselves or the artists? Well, 
from my perspective, it seems like it's just, you know, you, you send an open verse and then the person jumps on it and that's really it. It's not like what I'm used to here in America when someone does a collaboration, like you would see them interacting with each other um, or you would see them go to dinner. You know, they're like going from places to places and you can see the camaraderie, you can see the the friendship. Um, we're not really doing that. I don't know if it's because of the distance um, and the scheduling, you know, because everybody's a star in their own right. But I would like to see more of that. I think that would translate, it will help translate to the American audience, like who this person is. Because we may see the names flash or we hear the song and we don't really identify with who the person is. Like you may not know what this person looks like, but you know their voice. And so there's a lot of that going on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, if you just tune in, this is 3FM 92.7. Showbiz 927 is what you're listening to. On Zoom with me now, Richard Dinbati. Um, so, um, I know you've worked with a few Ghanaian arts, uh, Stone Boy, Shata, Sack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Three. <laughs> wow. The top three. The Mount Rushmore. <laughs> the top three, yeah. Triple three. I yeah. see, I see. So, um, with, with Stone Boy, mm-hmm. who is now signed on to Dev Jam Records, uh, yeah. I I know his his latest album that's the fifth dimension is doing so well. Yes. And I'm I'm actually wondering if, well, after getting all these plugs down, can we be smiling to say, well, come next year, Stone Boy is finally going to grab that nomination to be to add up to what Rocky Dahoni has actually done some some years ago at the Grammys. Right. That's that's also a beautiful moment. (laughs) I met him also. I mean, we'll see. We can't really say, um, but we'll see. I think what everybody should know is that when as far as the Grammys go, it's based on the network inside. So it's not like a fan voted Mm. um, award. It's your music peers. Okay. And so the more people that are submitting your recording or saying like, I like this thing, or I want it to eventually get nominated, that's your fighting chance. Okay. All right. So yeah. uh, I'm highly informed. You played a role in Stonewall actually joining the Recording Academy. That's right? Yeah. He, um, he actually has been reaching out to me for a few years, even before the pandemic. Okay. So yeah, like he he's someone that has been very, very, very um, focused and committed and knew what he wanted to do um, and, and highly in, in, uh, intentional. Mm. And I would want to see more artists, especially from Ghana, approaching it like the way that he hit, he is. Okay. So yeah. talking about Ghana, I'm highly informed. Uh, I don't know if you are still... Because I, I I was told you you had uh, D Black's publicity in, in yes in, in, in yeah the yeah absolutely wow so what's the plan for 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 Black actually because well he, we 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 know him to be the enjoyment minister right here in Ghana <laughs> <laughs> well I mean I don't I we don't work together anymore oh really. Um, yeah, no, I haven't talked to him in a while. I think when I was going to come to Ghana, I hit him up to ask him, like, you know, do I need a visa, that kind of thing. But I'm unsure. I haven't really seen much either. Okay, so it's it's got to do with the visa, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I see. Don't worry. We'll handle that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll handle that. So, um... You, you know, for me, it was actually a great moment when we we finally got to hear that High Life, Granny and Jewel has been, been added to the category definition. And um, to, to, to some of us who are f- music enthusiasts, we actually felt, look, this is actually the time. But as a member of the Academy, how did the news get to you and how did you feel? Oh, my God. I mean, so first of all, I'm a huge fan um of the Sako boys 
and just J Bad and and everybody, right? Like Yao Tug and and everyone. So, because for a, a long time we were thinking like maybe it was just going to be Afro beats, and then like internally we came to the conclusion that like Africa is not only Afro beats, right? There's several other genres, and so how do we? how do we actually like say okay you know like how do we cover all of these different sounds and cultures and that was one of the um well two um of the the genres that there is a lot of music coming out under those genres so it couldn't be ignored Three um, FM, but i also want to add 7. that if there's anything that we miss when it's when you are um, submitting a recording, you can put the genre name in there, you know, so it can be added. So if we missed anything, you can also say like, all right, I'm making music and this is what it's called and put that there too. Okay. All right. So with, with, with the categorization to that, that layman who is listening to him, to, to us now, should, should that person ask what really goes into it? What would be the answer? What really goes into what exactly? I mean, um, categorization of the the Grammys. Well, it needs to it needs to be um, a a genre or a thing that is popular that people would vote for, like people that would would submit because that was a thing too. You know, we we weren't sure if it was like a fleeting thing or if it was going to stay because. We have to make sure that it's going to stay. We don't want the the category to, you know, disappear or wither away. So that's that's really it. I think the more that we this is the crucial time, like we have the category, but everybody needs to make sure that they are submitting recordings and 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 turning out and showing up and and understanding that process because then it would just be like a vanity thing and we wouldn't get it done. Mm. So that's why I'm saying like, it's, it's, um, there's so much work that needs to be done for, for us to break it down and, and make it make sense to everyone. So everyone can uh, participate. And this is why I always say it's good to be a member and apply to be a member so you can understand the inner workings mm. because I can say what I can say to you in this short amount of time, but, it's so dense, like you need to like actually pair with someone that's going to talk to you and let you know like this is how it's done. Okay, All right. So breaking it down, it means one cannot just release a song and expect to fall at the Grammys and get nominated. No, mm. <laughs> like your team, like the people that know, like that are members or. Um, associates or you know that understand and are part of the the um, academy they have to submit you know your label can submit on your behalf um, a media company can submit on your behalf these are things that are not really clear to the the general public okay all right but one thing i actually noticed here in ghana especially when the new categories were added yeah. You would realize that most Ghanaians were actually over the moon when we had actually had High Life and Ghanaian Drill because we felt now this is our own. Yes. Should the musicians who do this, Jenna, should they be smiling already? And Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They should. I think we just need to take it a step further and do what we can to make sure these recordings are being released commercially mm. in the United States. Okay. That's the only thing. Cause when, when I heard that part, I took it personally and I was just like, oh my gosh, we've been doing all this fighting, all this fighting. Okay. And now we're here and I'm like, someone needs to break it to them because they're probably just thinking like, okay, like I've, I, I've done what I've done and that's it. But it's not, we got to take it a step further to just make sure that it qualifies. Okay, so a step further means good production, good PR work, and getting a label in the state to, to release that record, right? Yes, yes. Or creating an indie label and releasing it 
under that name, making sure that there's an address in North America. Okay, so currently in Ghana, there's a conversation going on on major record labels coming in to come sign up already established artists. You know, some years ago, labels who actually pick them from from grassroots, the groom, build them, and then they are big stars. But now yeah. you you get them come and you're already targeting the big boys. Um, yeah. Some some do f- feel that it's it's actually taking something away from from the industry because the, the the big boys are already there. They also need the young boys to come join. So why not I agree. why not invest in, into the young guys more now? But looking at the big boys instead of getting the young boys to also pull up and join them at the top. That's a great point. I think. Thinking about it on the label side and the business side, they are thinking in terms of ROIs. Like, okay, let's go after the people that have huge fan bases and and following. That's what they're thinking initially. Like that is what's on people's minds. Um, I think that the third generation of African artists will start to see more of what you're saying. Like the younger artists coming in um, and them you know, um, doing the A&R work with them and and label teachings and all those things. I think we'll see that for the third round. Mm -hmm. I guess they figure that the big boys and the big girls, they they already are stars, you know, so they feel like maybe let's go ahead with them and, you know, help like translate what's happening through the stardom. So maybe if you're not from this place that this person is from, you can at least understand that where they're from, they are the big wigs, like they are the superstars, they are the people that are important. And I think around the world, that's what we we tend to understand, especially in America, like we understand what it is to be a, a superstar mm. and that is attractive to us. Okay, so with, with, with that, isn't it going to discourage local investors especially when they are those who pick these boys from scratch groom them Mm -hmm. gets them to that level that you the record label would want to come tap into is it not going to discourage i mean local investors from doing more ah will it discourage them i mean in terms of the time so 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 i'm 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 saying this because I am an investor. I get okay. uh, I get close to an artist. I pick him up. I get to, you know, I found everything up. Now the artist blows after two, three years. He has a hit song. Fortunately yeah. or unfortunately, we just have a five-year contract, which means uh, within two years, I'm supposed to <laughs> work a bit harder to get my monies back. And of course, you, you know the kind of money that goes into our industry. Not yeah. all come back to you, the investor. So if... The artist's contract is up and he says, look, I'm not going to sign because I have a a big label coming to come and pick me. It means you, the Uh, investor, you lose out. I see. I see. But this is why um, some people do it where, you know, even after you are signed to the person, they still collect some sort of um, percentage, residual something because you people like you that invest you are definitely part of the artist's fabric like you help them become what they are like you are helping them to record and and release music videos things that people like us would see and then say oh okay i went and i checked out this person and maybe checking out their releases for the past two to three years like that is you you help them So, you know, just as much as it is the artist that is recording and doing the work, like how do they do their work and distribute without the money? It's in tandem. It goes hand in hand. So I think there there needs to be a way to factor that in and say, okay, yeah, you can go ahead and and be with this bigger label. Maybe it's a JV situation where you guys are doing a joint venture. Okay. Or, you, you know, you have to figure it out because I know you want it to make sense for you also. Okay. All right. Um, it's 10.52. Yeah. On 3FM 92.7. If you just tune in, 
well, we've had about 20 minutes of conversation gone down. But hey, we are streaming live on our Facebook page. So you could just want to log on 3FM 92.7. And I'm sure you could have the conversation on there to watch. Um, on Zoom with me, Richard Dean Batty. She's a member of the Recording Academy at the Grammys. Uh, and a Grammy U mentor. She's the North American press agent and U.S. business manager for Oxlade. Nigerian artists, obviously. So, uh, Richie uh, has forged relationships with brands like New Balance, Google, the three big major labels, um, Sony, BMG, Universal Music, and Buona w- w- Music Group. So, yeah. I hope you now have a fair idea of who I'm speaking with this morning. <laughs> 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 so, uh, let's come to Ghana. Let's come to yeah. so whilst we're talking, I, I heard you say you you love the Asaka boys, you you love what you're doing. Um how how vibrant is it or was it in the state? Well, I think at one point, especially with online and when everybody was um on lockdown, like I saw like Team Vogue had written about them and and all of that, like I don't know. I can't say that I've heard the music playing in the club, per se. But I know that there are people here that know who they are. Mm. So I definitely want to see more from them. Um, Somehow immersing themselves here. I know that they're currently on tour, but I don't think they're coming to the U.S. So there's that. But yeah, me personally, I love I love the the Ghanaian drill music I love anything that that promotes globalization and um, brings us closer to home I think because of people like Pop Smoke it just made like drill like people are listening to different types of drill that may not be spoken in English um, because of the popularization of that music that sound okay all right uh, should should we wake up one day and um, we get to know that any of these boys, I mean, it could be the Asaka boys, the yeah, talk, should they decide to um, turn their attention to the state? Uh, is, it, is, it looking, is, is it looking good? Because um, now the, the, the Ghanaian Joe, okay, so over here, it's, it's not as hard as it was some um, two years ago. And I'm sure yeah. it's, it's because you know we are we are all moving into uh, the Afrobeat. Of course, now that yes. there's there's Afrobeat, which seems to be penetrating, everybody seems to be tapping into it. But to to somebody like me, who who was a mad fan of that, and I I always wish that would still be on. I would I would actually be happy to see to see the Ghanaian drill actually get to that spot where. We get to the Grammys and then we we we, we see about two Ghanaians nominated, and then at least one winning. <laughs> it can happen. It can. Mm. Okay, anyway, so should should we be ex- so, so? This would be my last question on the on, on the Grammy thing for now. So should we be happy that uh, now that the Ghanaian jewel has been captured, it would open doors? for other musicians in other African countries to also tap into the drill sound. Yes. That's, I think, it's so, you know, music is all about collaboration. And I think the more that it's, it's broadened and you guys are pushing, it'll make it more popular, right? Because this is the first time that we have a category here. And a lot of the... the um, people that are going to vote, they may not be familiar with the different um, sounds, the different genres. But like the more that you see something, the more you feel like you know it. So if um, Ghanaians are pushing more, you know, and putting themselves in front, then it would become a thing. Then it'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember I saw, I know that J-Bad did something with the game. I saw something like that. Like if he was pushing that, whether him or the game, like, 
and it's cemented here, then it would become a thing like, oh, okay, what is that? Like, oh, okay, that's, what is he singing in? Like, what language is that? Or, you know, maybe he's mixing English in. Like, if we are peaking the, um, the interests of so many people now. So we, right, as like people that are working on the back ends and the, the music makers, we should understand that and like <laughs> not shy away from it, like run towards it and be like, okay, yes, here I am. Here's my music. This is what this sounds like. Like, don't just make the music and be quiet is what I'm saying. You have to promote it to the fullest. Like you have to be, do it on purpose because this is the first time and now everyone's looking. So you want to capitalize on that. Okay. Okay, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you for spending your mornings with, with me. Uh, I know you should be in bed by now. But yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It's but, okay. But but it's but important <laughs> for the love of our industry and our continent. You 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 spent yeah. some 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 minutes with me and I am grateful. I appreciate this so much and I can't wait to see you in Ghana. Yeah, definitely, definitely. By God's grace, I'll be there. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll talk to you another time. Thank you. Okay. All okay. Right. And before I go, shout out to Nabian. He's incredible. Shouts to everybody. You are shouting out now. <laughs> <laughs>